Hi, I'm Summer Bacon, and I am a trance medium for the beautiful spirit, Dr. James Martin Peebles, who died in 1922 at the age of 99.9 years old. He was a writer, he was a mystic, he was a naturopath, and he became a medical doctor at the age of 60. He performed surgeries during the Civil War, and he traveled the world five times. Uh, he was the consulate to Turkey for the United States government as well. And, um, and he's just a beautiful spirit now. And what makes him a little different than the other spirits that are, are channeled is that he actually walked the earth and he started to show up at, even at his own memorial service uh, after he died. So he started showing up through his friends and other people around the world. And you can actually see pictures of him and, and he had books that he wrote. So there's a lot of tangible evidence of his existence that can be verified. So it's really, really kind of fun. And also, he is the one who channeled all the material that's in my book called This School, called Planet Earth. I hope you enjoy it. Thank you. Wow. <laughs> um, well, I have been aware of the fact that I would be a spiritual teacher since I was 11 months old. And um, I remember I was standing outside on the grass and my mom had one of those old Polaroid cameras and she was gonna take a picture of me. And she said, I'm gonna take your picture. And I was really cranky and I really didn't want her to take my picture. And she just kept saying, smile, Sammy, I'm gonna take your picture. And then um, the, the minute she snapped that camera, I was like, okay, okay. I'm going to find out what this truth thing is about once and for all. And I knew there were, it was like guides, angels. I don't know how to describe it, but there were so many around me in that moment. And I said, okay, okay, I'll do it. And many years later, my mom said, I told my mom the story and she, she said, I have that picture and she showed me. So I actually have the photograph of that moment. You can see how cranky I was in it too. <laughs> I wasn't very happy. I wasn't smiling, that's for sure. But, um, but it was a, you know, so it's, it was, it's been a long journey. I've had a lot of, um, mystical experiences, psychic experiences when I was younger. I saw spirits, heard spirits, felt spirits. Um, it was exhausting sometimes because I, I didn't really know why I had the, these things happening to me. Um, I didn't really find it scary or anything. It was sort of just part of my life. It was natural. And so um, in about 1988, 89, somewhere in there, I met um, Dr. Peebles, who's a spirit who uh, was channeled through a wonderful trans medium, Thomas Jacobson. And I met him on, uh, Thomas was doing a radio show and I met Dr. Peebles on the radio show. And it was just so amazing what he said to me. I, I, I was immediately intrigued by this and I thought, this is very real, it's gotta be real. And so I started to explore this idea of that there were spirit guides and spirit and this idea of channeling a, a spirit and letting them use your body to speak because i wanted to know that there really was god and spirit and that it was real and i wanted it tangible i didn't want to just believe it i wanted to know it i wanted to feel it i want you know if this is going to happen i wanted to feel that spirit inside of my body so that i could really say yes beyond a shadow of a doubt this is this is real but the problem was, I was um, at one time in my life, I became a born again Christian and I was terrified of demons. Um, it seemed all they ever talked about in church was Satan. And um, so I was, I was living life in a lot of fear, you know, trying to just constantly, you know, as far as I was concerned, Satan was in my lunch meat, you know, could be anywhere. And I, it was just, I lived a life of fear and terror. And eventually I just said, I can't do this anymore. And I thought, if God is love, and God loves me, then I have nothing to fear. And I thought, I need to know once and for all that God's love is real and true and constant. So I said to him one night, I say him, I know a lot of people say source or whatever, I just say him. Um, I said, I, I want you to, you know, I, I want you to show me that your love is real and constant. I'm going based on that, that this, that your love is real and constant. And I want to know that spirit is real. And I said, I'm not going to worry about possession. I'm not going to worry about demons. I'm not going to worry about any of that because I know that whatever this, whatever happens with this God, you're, you're in charge and you're guiding it. And I'm trusting that hundred percent. 
because I had to, I had to know. I was, I was at a point where I was suicidal. I was like to a point where I wanted to kill myself just to find out if it was real on, on the other side. So um, I asked spirit to stand in the middle of the room and I went on the premise of, I said, look, I, and, I, and I knew at that point, Dr. Peebles, I knew who he was from the radio show. And I went on the premise of, Dr. Peebles, I know you know that I'm real. You don't need proof, you don't need evidence, you know? Uh, <laughs> so I, I, said, I said, so I need to know that you're there and that you're real. So I said, could you stand in the middle of the room and I will look for you with my heart. And that's what I did. And I did this every day, obsessively. I came home from work, I had a baby, uh, my daughter and I was living with my parents and I put my baby to bed. And then um, I would sit there and I would look in the center of the room for like four hours at a time. And sometimes I'd see a little glimmer of something and I'd go, okay, I see that. And then eventually one, one day when I was about to give up on all of this, this magenta orb just pops in, you know, into the center of the room. And I was like, whoa, okay, I see that for sure. And I said, is this Dr. Peebles? And when, when I said, is this Dr. Peebles? The orb got bigger. And I said, I asked a question that for a no answer and it, and it went smaller. So the yes was big, no was small, maybe was a kind of a back and forth, back and forth. Um, so I started asking questions of him and getting answers. And I did that night after night and the magenta orb would come back. And one night I said, okay, this is getting kind of boring. <laughs> and um, I said, you know, I don't know what's next. And the orb goes, and it, it flew up right next to the side of my head. And I'm like, oh my gosh. And, and I, I looked at it and my reaction was to touch it. So I reached up to touch it and my hand disappeared. I was like, oh my gosh. So um, that's when I started to ask for uh, this magenta orb, this Dr. Peebles energy to uh, work with me and to come into my body. It went to the back of my head. I started feeling my, my head going back and that sort of thing. Um, and actually prior to, prior to that, that time where I was actually deciding to practice channeling and seeing if this is real, what, there had been another, something that happened prior to this with Dr. Peebles. Um, I, at the time I didn't know it was him, but, but now I do know it was him. Um, I was laying in bed and that's when I was talking to God and I said, I need to know what this is about and once and for all. And I put myself in the most vulnerable position I could possibly be in, which was to sleep in the dark. I, I was so afraid of demons and things. I always slept with the door open, a light on. Um, and I, this time I closed the door, I turned off the light. I laid on my back on my bed, which is the most vulnerable thing I could possibly do. And, um, and I laid there and I said, just bring it. Whatever this is, I need to know. And what, night after night, I had all of these experiences of um, out-of-body experiences. Uh, one night, a little girl visited me um, in spirit, and she was dressed kind of like in a little house on the prairie outfit. Um, and she kept staring at me and staring at me. And I finally started kind of communicating with her. And I found out that she had, she and her parents had died in a car accident, but she didn't know she was dead. And so I actually guided her to go be with her parents, and they finally took her. And then she stopped, you know, showing up at the side of my bed. There were. Um, angels that visited uh, one night. I'm, I think it must have been Archangel Michael, a huge angel was over my bed. And I was just amazed. And so I did this for so long every night, asking for these experiences, whatever it was. And it went on for a year. And, and that's when I started realizing, well, I'm still here, you know, Satan hasn't taken me. Uh, you know, I haven't been bothered by demons and, and everything's good. You know, and I thought, okay, this is going along pretty well. And I thought, well, but still, I didn't know the point of it. And so then at that point, I woke up one night and my body was sitting up and I, I didn't do it. I, I, and, I, and my eyes were open and suddenly I'm there and I go, wait a minute, I didn't sit up. And, I, and I'm like, am I in my body? And when I asked myself that question, am I in, in my body? My response was to go to the bathroom mirror and look at myself. And I kind of like flew there, projected there. I looked in the mirror, I saw myself ethereally. It was me, my face, and the bottom part of my, my body, strangely enough, was almost like, you know, Casper the Friendly Ghost, you know, like it was kind of wispy. And, um, and I thought, what?
So I, I go back to my body. I, I, I start go, coming into my body and I'm passing through this incredibly benevolent being and my mouth is moving. And the words, God bless you, God bless you, God bless you, are coming out And I, as I'm passing through. And then the being left, and then I was back in my body, and I'm, my eyes are open, and I'm sitting there. I'm like, what just happened? And I hear at the side of my bed these two amazing angelic voices. Just, I can't, I can't say they were human even in their quality. It was, the sound was so beautiful. And the male voice said, well, what do you think? And this female voice said, well, it looks like destiny to me. And I'm like, destiny? What destiny? And because I was living with my parents at the time, I thought, is that my mom and dad? And then I got up, went upstairs, and um, my dad was snoring and my mom was sleeping. I thought, what just happened? And so it was from there that, you know, that's when I started this exploration, as I was sharing earlier about the, the orb and asking it to come in and I didn't really know what I was doing, but I, I had seen Dr. Peebles channeled through Thomas Jacobson, which was full body channeling. So when Thomas would go into trance, there would be this huge groan that would come out. It was like he was being punched in the stomach. The energy was so strong. And then Dr. Peebles would move his mouth and this whole other voice came out. And it was just, and you could feel the energy shift. You could feel the change just as, you know, you might feel the difference between a one person or another comes into the room, you can feel the energy shifting, you can feel their energy. And so it was just like that with Dr. Peebles, he had his own energy. And, um, and it was just, it, it was amazing. And so I practiced a lot, I mean, for like six years. And um, I didn't want to become a trans medium. Uh, you know, I didn't want to do the, this as a job. I had no interest in hanging out my shingle. I just needed to know, and, and I want to emphasize this, the point of channeling, as far as I'm concerned, is to develop an, your relationship with God and spirit. And you can't develop that relationship if, you know, like, I can't be friends with you if I don't call you. You know, we got to go to lunch. We got to have coffee. We got we to gotta share, you know, we got to get intimate with each other in order to develop that relationship. And it's the same thing with God and the same thing with spirit. And so that's what I did. I called him up a lot, you know, every night. And, um, and again, because I, I had to know, I had to know beyond a shadow of a doubt that this was real. So, um, you know, eventually, um, I, I meant six years later, I ended up, um, I was, I, I had, well, I was, I'll, I'll just share this because it's kind of interesting. I, I had a, an experience before I actually channeled. Um, it was about four days before the first time I actually went into trance, deep trance. And I was in a, a marriage that was very abusive. Um, and um, I, I got up in the middle of the night and I, my husband was snoring and I went and sat on the couch and, and I fell asleep uh, laying down on the couch. When I woke up, I was on my stomach, but I was floating up above the couch, about four feet above. And there were these tall, white, benevolent, beautiful beings around me and really tall. And I could feel they were like zipping up my spine. Um, and it was really, I could just feel it. It wasn't painful or anything, but I could feel something happening there. And they lowered me to the couch and they said, um, don't move, you know, for 15 minutes. And I was like, I can't move. <laughs> I couldn't move. And, you know, so I was just laying there with my eyes open, just kind of, and they just kind of blinked out. Well, about four days later, I was, I had so much pain in my, my back, my body. I was in so much pain and I was really thinking, what is wrong with me? Am I, am I dying or whatever? It was such, I had, I had a lot of physical pain all my life, but this was excruciating to the point. I, I didn't know what to do. I couldn't even get dressed that morning. My husband, who was so unkind, you know, said, oh, why don't you just go in the bedroom and meditate? And, and I was, and, and I, I was like, okay. So I went into the bedroom. And my big meditation was, God, I want to be healed now. <laughs> it was like really demanding. And I hear, go get your husband and bring him into the room. And I'm like, he's not going to come in the room. I mean, he, he wouldn't do anything if I asked him to do it, you know. And I said, I was like, oh, God, and then go get him and bring, bring him into the room. And, and the voice said, doctor's orders. And I was like, oh, gosh, okay. 
So I said, hey, I guess you're supposed to come in the room and watch me meditate. And he goes, oh, okay. I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> and, um, and so he came and he sat down and, and I, he was aware of trance and he was aware of Dr. Peebles too. He had met him through Thomas as well. So it wasn't like it was out of the realm of, you know, of, out of the realm of interest for him. He knew I was practicing uh, channeling and trying to, to become a trance medium to, to have that experience. And um, so I sat down and I thought, what am I supposed to do? And I went, okay, I want to be healed now, God. He's in the room. And all of a sudden I felt my head go back and I felt this tug in my throat. And I thought, I know the words Dr. Peebles is, it says, is, you know, first words are, God bless you, Dr. Peebles here. It is a joy and a blessing. And I knew those words. So I thought, I'm just going to say them. And all of a sudden, he took over. And then he and my husband had a conversation for about an hour. And um, afterwards, my, my, my husband's jaw was on the floor. He just said, oh, my gosh. We talked about things you don't even know about me. And, and I thought, wow. And that was just the beginning. So then for three years, um, I was channeled, well, because my husband was so abusive, and he was a beautiful man, he has a beautiful soul, really. There was, there was a lot of beautiful things about him, but I was afraid of him. And he would ask me to channel all the time. And he was out to test the channel. And so he was like a drill sergeant for me. And it was a real blessing in some strange way. You know, it was a real blessing because I, you know, committed to doing this no matter what, because I was so afraid of getting in trouble if I didn't. So he would ask for, um, you know, Ed Edgar Casey, who I didn't even know who that was. And Edgar Casey would talk to him. He asked for his grandmother to come through, a grandmother I didn't even know, and he talked to her. So I ended up doing full body channeling where every voice came out and through was different. Um, sometimes they would get up, use my body to walk around, to express themselves. Um, and there was one time he asked for his uncle to come through and his uncle, uh, I guess, was a, a kind of a hermit who lived in, the, in a forest in, uh, in Oklahoma. And, um, and it was kind of funny because I didn't know about this uncle at all. I knew nothing about him. And his, uh, this uncle comes through and he, he leans forward and he starts, I can feel and taste that he's, he's using chewing tobacco. And I'm like, oh, this is so gross. <laughs> I could taste it and everything. And he's doing this thing with the, his mouth. And then he's about to spit. Uh, you know, like with the chewing tobacco thing. And I have a pile of clean clothes on the floor that has not, has not yet been folded. And I, I was so much more aware of what was happening. I was like a puppet in the beginning stages of the channeling. And so <laughs> he, was, he was about to spit on my clean clothes. And that was the first time where I realized I was in charge. I said, whoa, 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 no, do not. I said, you swallow it. <laughs> I'm telling him, you know, telepathically. <laughs> and he, he goes, he's like, yes, ma'am. And, and he swallows it. <laughs> And I could taste it. It was so funny. So I went through three years of that kind of uh, stuff with the, with the channeling. Channeling for anybody that wanted to, me to channel for them. I did it for free. Um, I channeled dearly departed loved ones. That was really where I got a, a, a tremendous a validation of what I was doing, you know, because I, I couldn't have made this stuff up. I mean, it was really, really something. And, um, you know, I, I channeled for this young lady with her husband was there and he was a real skeptical, a skeptic, skeptic. I mean, he was really skeptical. And, um, and he's sitting there, he goes, he goes, you know, I'm, 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 I'm skeptical. He says, you're a nice person, but I just want you to know. I said, that's okay. I said, you don't have to believe this. I'm not out to prove anything to anybody. And, um, so he sits down with his wife and, and his best friend comes through who passed away from a drug overdose. And when his friend comes through, he's, so tall. I'm about five, four and three quarters. And this guy is so tall and I could feel my body is getting elongated and all of this. And, um, and, and he leans way back, puts his, his hands behind his head and does the very posture that he would do, you know, in life. And he goes, Oh man, I overdid it that time. And he go, and they had this whole conversation and the guy left and he was not a skeptic anymore because he had a conversation with his best friend about things that I know he knew I would not have known about. But anyway, I just, you know, the channeling has been an incredible experience. Um, 
because it's taught me a lot um, about myself is what it's done. First of all, it eradicated the fear of de demons and, and Satan and all of that because I know that this is my body. I'm in charge of this. I'm the one to, you know, decide, you know, who's going to be allowed to come through. And I, I also learned about a lot of my own personal biases and judgments against people uh, through this process of channeling dearly departed one loved ones and some people who weren't necessarily nice even. And, um, but I would let them through anyway, because in order to help the person I was channeling for, I had to let them talk to the person they wanted to talk to in order to heal that relationship. So for instance, there was a lady who came to me and she asked for her mother. And I thought when this mo his, her mother started coming into my body, I thought, oh, she's not a nice lady at all. I mean, I could tell she was really not nice. And I thought, I don't want this coming through. And I, and I thought, I just got to do it. I knew it. And she came through and she's berating and belittling her daughter and being not nice and did all this stuff. And then, and then she finally left. And um, the lady in front of me said, wow. She said, I knew it. I knew she hadn't changed. She said, that's why I asked for the session. And I said, it, it, are you okay with it? She said, oh, I'm really okay with it. She said, I knew she wouldn't change. She said, that's really validating. She said, that's what I thought. She said, just figures. And she just kind of shook her head and she said, thank you so much. And for her, it was really, I don't know, it just really was very healing. So it wasn't all just, you know, light love and all this stuff coming through and, you know, all positive messages and perfect and whatever. And and um, so I, I kind of ran the gamut of, of channeling in a, in a wide variety of ways of, of beings, of, of animals. I channeled people's dogs. I, I, I channeled all kinds of things. So it was, you know, it's been a, it's been an amazing journey in learning about what I learned about, like, let's say with that woman that I channeled, who was not very nice, I could feel her, I could feel her from the inside out and I could feel her reasons for her anger and her sadness that she carried and her, you know, self doubt and, and, and her own fears. And, and it suddenly made me, it got me to a point where I could actually love people that I normally wouldn't have been able to have loved because I could really understand them firsthand from the inside out you know it's like if you could if you could if you've ever hugged somebody and you just love them so much and you just wish you could just merge with them to know them that intimately you know it, it like you just you just wish you could just break that barrier down and just merge with them and know their thoughts and everything and that's what channeling has done for me it's really been an incredible experience <laughs> I try to I try to teach channeling as as a really more of a it's more of a type of spiritual psychology in some ways it's a way to grow into greater love uh, to deepen your relationship with God in tangible ways and with spirit in tangible ways um, you know I I try to teach it so that people get the fear out of the equation um, so many people have so many fears and so many biases and and things and and um, I, I I don't know why I wasn't I don't know why I wasn't, um, I just, I, I wanted to drop the fears. I just wanted to, to, to know spirit intimately and know God intimately. And it's helped me to know people more intimately as well. And so I, I, I can get along with a lot of people as a result of it too. You know, it's been kind of neat. I have a very eclectic group of friends, you know, from all walks of life. Some are atheists, some don't believe in what I do and it doesn't matter. We get along beautifully, so... Oh, Dr. Peebles, um, I, I just kind of almost have no words to, to describe uh, what has happened as a result of channeling him. Um, it's been challenging in many ways, um, very, very challenging. Um, he's such a teacher of the energetics of the universe, and he's so allowing of people and who they are in their journey. And, and um, he doesn't try to push anybody to do anything in particular. He's, you know, people call it, they say, I want a session with Dr. Peebles. And it's not really a session, with, you know, like a reading with Dr. Peebles. 
it's a, it's a consultation. He, he takes that finger that you point out at the world and he points it back to you because it all starts from the inside out. And that's what I've learned more than anything from Dr. Peebles is how much everything really starts on the inside. You can't pick up a pen without it first thinking about it, then you manifest it on the exterior. And it's the same with everything. But um, he's been He's been amazing um, in in teaching me about you know how to how to get over my my fears a lot of that um, in healing from my marriage that was so abusive. One of the things he said there was he just said I thought gee why do I still love my my ex husband deeply you know I care about him very much and he said because love is never wrong you can't you can't destroy the love it was very real and he said you can't it, it, love is never wrong and that that was a big Thing to, to embrace and to understand and it was very freeing because I didn't have to become something particular in order you know like some people think they're supposed to not love their ex or, or something you know in and and so they try to unlove them and they try to hate them you know or people or maybe their new spouse or something says well why do you even care about that person and so they say yeah you're right I shouldn't care about them and it's like no no that's not what it's about this is about growing into greater and greater love and knowing that there's purpose and value in everything that we do. Uh, Dr. Peebles has taught me that, I mean, the energetics of the universe is so vast. We are so interconnected. We are, we are so one that um, he says, you know, think about the fact that if you stub your toe, um, that just that one little action, it hurts. You get angry. Why did I stub my toe? What if we told you, he says, that you just saved a hundred thousand lives because that one little shift in the universe created that, that ripple that saved 100,000 lives. Maybe it just put a train back on the rails or something, or maybe it stopped that one person from starting a war and pushing the button, you know? I mean, so many, there's so many things that go on that we don't really understand energetically. And um, so, and, and especially in our society uh, in the United States, I mean, there's, you know, we're brought up to, uh, you know, live life in a particular way and follow the crowd and do things the right way and say the right things and wear the right clothes and buy the right car. And, but, and, and it's like, you know, and there's so many people who have these hidden private lives of wanting to know, or wanting to know or knowing that there is more, that they know that there is more in, in the world, but they're so afraid to, to share it. So I try to help people, you know, get, get the courage to speak their truth, to live authentically and to not be afraid to, to share who they really are with the world. Because once you do that, you end up attracting people of like mind and like heart. And sure, people fall away, family members, friends who don't believe in what you're doing and don't believe in your beliefs. Well, you know, great, <laughs> let them go. Because why spend your life maintaining a bunch of superficial relationships where you really feel unfulfilled? I mean, it just doesn't make sense to do that. And it's scary, but, but I can tell you that it will work if you actually start to live your life authentically. You know, you might, you might move to another country. <laughs> you know, you might move, you might do something that you never expected you would do in your life because now you're living authentically and now you can get really deeply in touch with your heart. And um, so that's, uh, yeah, Dr. Peebles has been amazing. I've, I've been married four times. And um, one of the things, one of the greatest gifts he's given me is the fact that I had two beautiful daughters. And one of the things I wanted more than anything in life was to be able to raise my children at home and to be with them and watch their first steps and everything. And he's given me the gift of being able to do that. I mean, it's just been, been incredible. And he's been the most supportive uh, male figure outside of my father in my life. I mean, that's one thing that I know um, that I can depend on him and uh, that, you know, he's never let me down with anything, but he's pushed me hard. It hasn't been easy. Sometimes he's, he can be a tough teacher. He doesn't make it easy for me. One thing I think that is a very, is, is a fallacy with um, people, what they think of a lot of times, that just because you're, you're spiritually connected uh, to, to God and spirit, that you're just going to get anything you want at the snap of your fingers. And it doesn't work that way. It's not like you have some sort of um, in, you know, like you're going to be treated special. You know, it's not that way at all. They love everybody and they're going to give you exactly what you need. You know, I, I pray for, for healing in my body and I generally, I don't get it. And I go, but you're Dr. Peebles. Come on, man. You know, come on. Give me some healing here. And um, he might do it in a roundabout way. He might, I'm, somebody might come into my life that shows me a modality that really works for me. 
And maybe in that, I'm also learning about myself and, and uh, feeling like, well, I just want to, I want, you know, I can be very, I want to be in charge. I want to take care of everything, do it myself. You know, I can do it because I've had to be very strong in my life in that respect as a single parent and stuff. I have had to do a lot by myself. And, um, and, but this is like, no, you need to let people take care of you, Summer. You know, maybe we could snap our fingers and you'd be healed, but you need to learn because this is a school called Planet Earth where we are learning to love and be loved and we're learning about ourselves and we're growing and we need to let life in. And so, you know, for me, it's been hard sometimes to reach out and say, oh, I need help, <laughs> you know, and so he's taught me that. So it's been it's been an amazing, uh, an amazing journey. It's been almost I'm in my 30th year. You know, people think that what I do is it, 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 it is new age, you know, and especially because I was living in Sedona where the, there's a huge new age community. But I, I did write that uh, article about new age is a lie um, because all these all of these things have been happening for, for centuries. And um, I remember one time somebody asked Dr. Peebles about, you know, well, how does this fit with the this channeling stuff fit with the Bible? And his reply was, my dear, how do you think the Bible was written? You know, it's somebody, it's somebody transcribe the word of God if you feel it's the word of God. You know, it's it, that's channeling. Sorry to say, folks, but it is. And uh, so there's, you know, there's that. And um, and and I just, you know, I realized that there there are so many things that um, in the Bible, for example, you know, Jesus heard angels speak. Uh, Jesus talked to Satan and said, "Get behind me." Uh, Jesus, you know, went out into the Garden of Gethsemane and 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 had his his moments of being very human and angry with you know God for having to do this thing that's so hard. And then he would he would come back to center and he would say, "Okay, I'll go out and I'll heal again." You know, but he he knew to give himself some time to regroup a little bit and get, you know it's hard work being a mystic. But all the things that he's doing, I mean, he's talking to God. He's hearing the voice of God. He's hearing the voice of angels. That's channeling. That's called clear audience. That is a form of channeling. So, um, you know, there's, there are so many things that, that people have misconceptions about with channeling and that it's, that it's evil or whatever it is. Now, I can say that if you're going to do this work and if you want to do this work, that's great. But it really has to start with it being something that you want to do for your own personal growth. It's not, the point of channeling is not to become a channel. It's not about that. It's the journey. And I've taught so many people and I've seen so many people get so upset because they say, well, how long is it going to take me? You know, well, it's like somebody who's, who's learning to be a, wants to be a concert pianist. But, you know, you can't be a concert pianist by just sitting at the piano doing nothing. You have got to do the work. You've got to play it, the, the same thing over and over and over again. 10,000 times before you really are ready for becoming a concert pianist. And you might never be one. You may never get there, but you've got to do the work and the joy should be in the journey of doing that. That's the thing that most people don't like. They want to get there. They want to see around the corner. They want to know what's next. They, you know, and, and so this isn't something that really, I, I think is not, even with all of my gifts of seeing and hearing and feeling uh, spirit, this didn't happen overnight. I worked really hard at this. And, um, and I, because I really wanted to learn to surrender my body and I really wanted to get out of the way, which was really hard. And uh, I didn't come into it with any preconceptions of, you know, what the spirits should be saying or anything. I even stopped watching the news and not reading the newspaper. I didn't want to know anything about anybody or the world, basically, because I wanted my channeling to be as pure as it could possibly be. So it's, it's, you know, if, if you're going to do the work, it's like do the work and enjoy the journey of it. Um, it's really important that you, you put the priorities in the right place, because if not, then there's some good channels out there. But, you know, maybe maybe they're channeling in a, a more limited category of, of things. You know, they might only want I only want good things coming through. I only want good words and I don't want any discussion of anything that's that's difficult or, or scary or whatever. And that's fine. You know, it's each his own. That's it's a beautiful thing. Um, and, and there but there are some channels that 
really I, I, I scratch my head and wonder. <laughs> and I don't, I don't mean that they're bad people or anything, but I just kind of scratch my head and wonder because what can happen with channeling so easily? It's very easy to editorialize what's coming through, especially if you hear it. And, and you think, I don't, want, I don't want that to be said. You know, that's not something that I want coming out of my mouth. And, uh, or, or that can't possibly be true about this person because I've already sized them up and I know everything about them. You know, well, you don't because they have a, most people have this deep inner private world that they're not exposing. And spirit has a tendency to be able to tune into that. And that's where they really get their healing. So um, it, a, a, a bad channel can be kind of like a bad cell phone connection, you know, where you're listening to somebody and, and, and you hear it completely wrong and you get angry and they go, no, 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 that's not what I was saying at all. It got all twisted and distorted, you know. So it's, it's really important that you, you really think about it in terms of being in integrity with every step of the way. You know, I, I had a few moments in, in my work in the beginning, especially because when I was first doing the work, I was aware more of what was going on. And, um, and, and I blocked the magic sometimes. And I was so, ah, oh, shoot, you know, why did I do that? I was, I was channeling for these two Dutch uh, boys and uh, young men, not boys, but young men. So sweet. And, uh, and the one guy wanted to talk to his dad. And I could see and I could hear these Dutch words. But I was so afraid of it being wrong that I didn't let it through. And afterwards, I said to them, I said, you know, I'm going to just say this because I got really nervous and I told them what I saw and heard. I don't speak Dutch. And they were like, oh, my God, that's exactly what my dad wanted to talk about. And I was like, oh, you know, so and, and maybe if I had let that through, I'd be channeling in Dutch, you know, because once that floodgate opens and you get the 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 knack and you realize it's it's it is real and pure what's coming through. It's a it's a process for me because it's a physical process. Uh, of letting the mouth go and, and create words and do things in, in, in other languages. That's, I have a little bit of a, a, I still have a block there. I really would love to be able to channel in any language. I really, really would love that, but it's not happening yet. Little bits and pieces, but not, not totally yet. But, but see, you can block that magic. And, um, you know, I, I remember even channeling for this lady and, and her grandmother uh, wanted her to know that she said, she said, even in heaven, she still had this uh, uh, wine barrel that was filled with flowers. And I thought, nah, that can't be true. So I didn't let it through. And then afterwards, I told the lady, and she said, oh, I wish you'd let that through. That was my grandmother. And she did have a wine, a wine barrel filled with flowers. And I'm so glad she still has that. You know, I mean, things like that, that were just so sweet and so specific and, and so healing for people. So... Well, you know, it's really funny. Um, because I lived in Sedona, I was pretty sheltered from a lot of judgmental people. And um, so, uh, no, I, 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 I had a couple of friends who were like, uh, you know, why are you even getting involved in this? And that was even before I was channeling, when I, when I was going to see uh, Dr. Peebles speak through Thomas Jacobson, you know. Um, and th at that point, I, I already started losing people in my life. But no, in... in um, the beginning of the channeling, I really didn't. And uh, it was, I really was incredibly supported. I had the best parents I could ever have hoped to have in my life. And they lived in Sedona as well. And so they were very supportive of me in the process, but they also wanted to kind of test it. And my mom was hilarious. I mean, she, she would push the limits with it because she was so creative. And I remember, you know, we're, we were over at her house and, and uh, all having, you know, dinner and drinks and stuff. And, and she goes, I wonder if you could channel um, uh, Mel Blanc, who's the uh, voice of all these uh, Looney Tunes characters. And I didn't know. And I, I okay, I don't know. Let's see. And Mel Blanc came through and he said, he said, but it's not me. He said, these characters exist. He said, why don't you channel the characters? Now, this is a new thing for me. And people listening to this might think this is crazy, but this really happened. No joke. I wish I had a video of it. I really do. Because all of a sudden, I think it was Porky Pig came through. Um, I forget, it was Tasman Tasmanian Devil came through. 
uh, the rootinist, who's the rootinist, tootinist cowboy, you know, uh, I can't remember his name, but, but when the Tasmanian devil came through, he started twirling around. My parents had a big living room, but it was filled with a lot of stuff, a lot of artwork and stuff. And I guess he started twirling around like, you know, he would do in the cartoon. It, and my, my parents and my kids were there too, my young children and everybody. They said it was, it was ridiculous. They said there is no way that you could have physically done what happened in that room that day. And then, uh, and, and, and my mom was so worried after I came out of it, the, the, uh, the cowboy character, I wish I could remember his Yosemite name. Yosemite Sam? Yosemite Sam. Yeah, when he, he came through at, at the end, you know how sometimes he would do like a, like a, oh, you got me, you know, and, and all that stuff. Well, he did that through me. And then he fell down and there was this huge bench in my parents' house and he fell down under the bench and pulled it down on top of him. And I remember coming out of trance. I was so, I was so immersed in that trance that it was, it was like I wasn't there. And, and I, I remember waking up on the floor and opened my eyes and my mom's face is like right here in front of me. And she's looking at me, she goes, are you all right, sweetheart? And I was like, yeah. <laughs> and it was so much fun. And, um, <laughs> And, and uh, my, oh my gosh, there's, there were so many things like that. It was just so, so, so fun to push the limits of it. It was so fantastic. Um, my mom, they had a, a house in Sedona that had big windows. And so oftentimes birds would hit the window and my mom would run out and pick it up and, you know, try to cool it and heal it and whatever. And there was a, a, a dove that had hit the window. And my mom, unbeknownst to me, she had this dove in a cage, a little, you know, like a little carrier. And she said, uh, the dove has been in there all day, but she won't drink, she won't eat. And, um, and she looks fine because she was just sitting up. She looked fine, but she just wasn't eating or drinking or anything. And my mom said, do you think you could channel the dove so that we can find out what's going on with it? And I'm like, okay, let me see. So I close my eyes and I, I, don't, I can't tell you exactly how I can channel the dove. I just, I just let them my understanding, the deeper understanding is that everything is contained within us. So essentially, if I'm channeling Dr. Peebles, the, the greater truth is that he's not coming into me, he's coming out of me. I'm letting him take the surface of my body to, to use it to be expressed. And so it's the same, the dove is contained within me, all things are contained within us. And um, so this, this dove came through and she says, oh, she says, I, she was a, a woman in Sedona who had died, but she always wanted to know what, what it was like to be a bird. So when she died, her spirit went into the dove and the dove was flying as, she, as she's like, wow, this is great. And then bam, she hit the window. And she said, and my mom said, well, what, is there anything we can do for you? Are you okay? She goes, well, my neck kind of hurts. And my mom said, oh, honey, do you want me to hold you? She said, no, no, don't touch me. But the, the little carrier was right there on the, on the table where everybody could see this bird. And all of a sudden, blood started. This, is, this was on Easter, in fact. Blood start, started pouring out of the, the dove's neck. And as I'm entranced, she goes, she goes, oh, yes, I think I'm going to go now. And it, as I, I'm, in, I'm channeling her, my head goes to the side and the dove's head goes to the side and the dove dies and the dove leaves me and I come out and everybody is bawling. I mean, it was, it was beyond, I mean, that's beyond anything I could, I could ever uh, imagine, you know? I think the main lesson in the book is probably that this is a school called Planet Earth, that um, there's, you know, there's no limitations. Um, everything is in right order, even the things that are scary and horrible and horrific. All the things that are happening here, it's a school where we're learning and we're growing. And we choose to be born. Uh, we choose our parents. We choose the life that we want to live. Uh, we choose the country we want to be born into, um, the experiences that we want to have. Uh, even even in horrific situations such as war, uh, you might even find that there are there are people who are 
specifically saying, I want to be born in a place that's going to go to war because I want to understand the contrasts so that I can come back to the earth later on to talk about war so that I really get to understand it. So there's, it's like there's different classes. You choose your courses when you go to college because you want to learn certain things. And, um, you know, so there's, there's that part of it, I think is really what it's about in the, um, in the school called planet earth in, in that book. Um, this might sound really strange, but I have to be quite honest. I have never read the book because I never even listened to the channelings that I did in my life until most recently. Now I know that's not going to, I'm not going to get any sort of bias or anything from listening to the channelings, but because um, I've done it for almost 30 years now. So, you know, but reading the book, I never read the book. I just, I just didn't want to um, muddle my ability to channel. I didn't want to have any expectations around it. So, but I do know that the book has so many interesting stories. I know that there are um, question and answer sessions in there where people are asking some tough questions about things like that, like about people going to war. I know uh, from the few things that I've, I've flipped through it a couple of times, um, you know, at one time I channeled, um, I don't know, I think it's in the book. I channeled uh, uh, quite a variety of, of spirits. At one, one time I channeled uh, Martin Luther King. Um, I, I did channel Adolf Hitler, believe it or not. And some people might say, well, why would you do that? And what happened was I was doing a group, and I believe that might be in the book. Um, I was doing a group uh, in my home and um, I was teaching someone how to channel. And so we were kind of just going with the flow of whatever was there. And I would do strange things. Like I would invite people who were interested in my work. I would say, well, you want to come to my house? We're having a session in my house. People I didn't even know. So there was this one woman who was in my house and she, I did not know, was Jewish. And all of a sudden I'm feeling, I'm like, guys, I think I am feeling Adolf Hitler wants to speak, you know? And I'm like, what in the world? And he came through very meek, very sorry, very sad. And he turned to this woman who I did not know was Jewish. And he said, would you please forgive me? And he wanted a hug. And it might sound strange, but that was, that's the truth of, you see the growth that we go through in life. It, you know, some people would get very mad at me about saying something like this because they'll say, well, you know, how could you channel him? And why would you ever do that? Because the reality is we're all growing and sometimes we grow in really strange ways. Some people have done horrific things in their past lives um, and they come back again. And again, I do believe in reincarnation. I don't believe that you have to reincarnate. I don't believe you have to um, go through your karma, but it's gonna, you're going to be stuck for a while in, in your growth. And you might say, well, you know, I just want to leave college for a few years and then oh, maybe I will go back to the earth and, and, and uh, work out some of these things. Uh, because it is the toughest school in the universe, by the way. Um, but, you, you know, you, sometimes people who have done horrific things in the past will grow into becoming really beautiful beings over time, coming back again and saying, oh, that didn't work. Because what we're doing is we're trying to love and be loved. We're trying to uh, learn how to love and be loved. Some people think that they can buy love. Some people think that they can force love. You know, I want you to love me. You know, I want to make you love me or... Some people think of uh, money as love. Well, if you give me money, I will feel loved by you. And so we do all these different little shenanigans and different dances together to try to learn about love and being loved and all of that. And eventually we, we learn that the love starts within, we fall in love with ourselves. And then we really realize that everything and everybody is really truly the center of everything and every person on the earth is love. They just forgot. I think that's something like, if you think about the um, fallen angel kind of thing, I think that's one of the reasons we come to the earth is because I think somewhere along the line, we have strayed from the belief in God, God's love for us, that we are loved. And it's like, well, you know, you might want to go down there to that school called planet earth and uh, take a peek around and see, see what you think about that. And so we forget that, that the love starts from within. And, and so as I'm talking about Adolf Hitler, you know, the best thing we can do for people that we don't like, who are doing horrific things to each other right now on earth, we've got wars and all sorts of things. We've got really corrupt politicians and all kinds of stuff going on. 
Well, instead of hating them, I mean, if you're hating them, you're kind of fueling their fire. They kind of dig it. You know, they're not out, they're not out to, you know, they don't want all the, the mushy stuff. But if you start sending love to these people, loving them and praying for them to be the very, very best person that they can become, then maybe, maybe, just maybe, we can change the world. And I think that's really the point. And I, that's, that's pretty much what Dr. Peebles talks about all the time in every teaching. So I would imagine that that is the, the, the crux of the book as well, you know, in terms of uh, it is a school called Planet Earth. And so you'll, you, you know, in, in the book, I know there's a lot of different sorts of channeling and things that I did going on that might raise eyebrows at times. But uh, I had one lady who read the book. This is so, she was so adorable. She is this Polish woman. And she came up to me, she goes, I read your book. And she says, she says, I got it. I understand. It's all about love. And I said, yes. And she goes, and she, at the time, I think, George Bush was president or something, and she didn't like him at all. And she goes, she goes, she goes, I even, she says, I have learned to love everybody. I even love Bush. <laughs> and I cracked up. I thought that was the cutest thing. And she really meant it. She really got it, you know, that that's really what it's about is, is, uh, is loving everybody and really been helping everybody grow. I, I, I still pray for my ex-husband who was so, so mean to me that he grows into the, be the best person he can possibly be. I want him to be abundant and happy and everything. I want him to have all his dreams fulfilled because why? Because he's my, the father of my daughter, for one thing, you know, and, and I want him to be the best person he can be and the best dad he can be and, and everything. So I think that's what we need to do more of instead of just trying to find ways to cut each other down all the time. And, and um, so that would be my answer as to what the book is about. Yeah. Well, people can find me. Uh, I have a website. It's uh, summerbacon.com. And summer like the season, bacon like the food.com. And I know some people don't like me to say bacon like the food because I've been told that uh, I shouldn't say that bacon is food because animals are not food, et cetera, et cetera. So <laughs> my apologies if I've offended you, but it's my name. <laughs> it's been a fun name to have. And, um, but, uh, and I, my work primarily right now is I'm not doing any private sessions for people uh, except for some uh, established clients uh, right now. But my prim primary work is I do these sessions every month called Dr. People Speaks. And he comes through and he talks about whatever it is he wants to talk about. And it's always very pertinent to the time. Um, I also do question and answer sessions of general questions that people might want to ask. And, um, and so I, I, um, do those uh, as well. I try to do those on a monthly basis as well. Um, and then I also, I do what I call as a conversation with some of, um, if you were interested in learning more about channeling, or sometimes people just need somebody to talk to, to say, I have these experiences, or I live in a haunted house, or, you know, I, I don't know if this is real, or I had an experience with extraterrestrials, or whatever it might be. I, I can talk to you about pretty much anything I've done. I've done ghost busting. I've, I've had encounters, physical encounters with extraterrestrials. I've seen UFOs. I've run the gamut of pretty much everything that you can imagine. And uh, so I'm, I, I can talk about anything and I have no judgment against any of, any of it at all. And so I'm, I'm more than happy to talk um, on that level. Uh, let's see. And then, um, but the Dr. People Speaks is, is my primary work right now. I do plan to start maybe doing some classes as well. So if you go to my website, sign up for my newsletter, and you'll find out uh, whether I'm going to be doing some classes and, and uh, more than likely about, you know, channeling your life, how to, how to live your life with, with the relationship with God and Spirit and developing that. I was just thinking, you know, I, know, I know you would like for me to channel Dr. Peebles. Um, and uh, because of the things that I've shared, um, I want to make it really clear that uh, his energy is really big. And my body's like a low voltage, voltage wire that this energy comes through. And it's, it's really strong. And sometimes I feel really wiped out afterwards because I don't, I don't hold back. Uh, I let him do what he needs to do. 
Um, so, but I, I also wanted to be clear about what I do is, is full body channeling. It, it, is, it is about, I'm not getting messages and sharing it. The voice is different that comes through. Um, he takes over my muscles of my mouth, my breathing. He says there are other spirits around who are also keeping, keeping parts of my body, you know, functioning and things while I'm in trance. Um, I know it might sound really strange, but even now, like as I talk to you, I can feel the, the tugs and pulls. I go into trance very quickly. Um, and the reason that I do is because when I set out to do this work, when I set out to get rid of my fears, you know, one of the things that I learned, I used to say, oh, I call upon the spirit of light, love, inspiration, and truth. I reach beyond the confines of the earth, the body, and the mind. And it's a great exercise to do that. And, and then I would, and I would, I would light incense and I'd open the portals and I feel like I had to do all these things. And then I got really bored of doing that, you know, and I thought, I'm just going to go into trance anyway. I know what it feels like. So let's just do it. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do it. God bless you, Dr. Peebles. Here it is a joy and a blessing when man and spirit join together in search of the greater truths and awareness. Uh, God bless you indeed, my dear friends, as you strive to understand your right to receive and to give abundance in this your chosen lifetime. We would like to offer to you the following principles to be used as tools in tandem. Number one, loving allowance for all things to be in their own time and place starting for yourselves. God bless you indeed. Number two, increase communication with all of life and uh, with respect. God bless you indeed. Number three, self-responsibility for your life is a creative adventure for through your choices and perceptions, you do indeed create your own reality. God bless you indeed, my dear friends, who have come to the school called Planet Earth to discover and dissolve the illusions of separation within self and between life. Certainly it is your labor of love to diminish these very same illusions wherein you will discover that never in your eternal soul have you been the victim, but always the creator and beautiful creators, each and every one, students of the divine. We love you so very much. My dear friends, you are beautiful spirits. Practice, practice, practice love in your life. And God bless you indeed. Watch your life change uh, by leaps and bounds. You, my dear friends, you have it within you to love and to be loved without expectation. Stop holding yourself back from the world, but allow for yourself to be shared with the world. What the world wants from you is you, God bless you indeed. The truth of you, God bless you indeed. If you don't share your truth, if you don't give it to the world, how's the world gonna ever get to know you? Don't hide yourself away and then say, well, why don't they understand me? Well, my dear friends, it starts with you. It's up to you to share of yourself with the world, to give of your love, to give of your heart, to give of your stories of self to share vulnerably, God bless you indeed, the vulnerability and the surrender to the very same is so very important in terms of getting yourself out there in the world. The only one who can do it is you, because it's all inside of you, God bless you indeed. No one can force you to fit the world. No one can make you fit the world. You fit the world already, God bless you indeed, by being yourself. Express yourself, trust in that. Find out who you are by listening to the honest echo from life around you. And it is there, my dear friends, that you will fall in love as never before. You will start to attract those of like mind and like heart. You will start to attract uh, situations that are so much fun that you will feel freedom and flight of soul beyond your wildest dreams and imaginations. You are beautiful spirits, students of the divine. Take a nice deep breath right now. Relax, release, surrender to your heart. God bless you indeed. Know that you, my dear friends, are already perfect. There is nothing that you have to do in order to be a beautiful spirit because you already are that. Some of you just forgot. Relax, release, surrender, take a nice deep breath and enjoin with the well without fear to know that you, my dear friends, have been birthed as God upon the earth. You, my dear friends, have that within you, the light. You have, my dear friends, the love the inspiration to share with the world by speaking your truth. Relax, release, and surrender, and take another nice deep breath. And know, my dear friends, that you are loved so very much and that you are made of love. Right now, if you want to, you can relax, release, surrender again. Breathe deeply into your spine and ask, my dear friends, for your, one of your spirit guides to come to you right here and now. Trust that they are with you. Listen with abandon and ask, who is it? Trust the first name that you hear. 
Allow for yourself to surrender to that without fear, without expectation, without judgment. Trust that you are worthy of this love that is here today in this room for you. God bless you indeed. And now, my dear friends, your guide has a little something they would like to share with you. Trust the very first thing that you hear. You might be surprised at what you hear and how beautiful it sounds to your ears and you can't believe that that is about you. Your guide wants you to know that. Yes, they do, my dear friends. And God wants you to know that God loves you. It is all about love. It is a dance. It is a labor of love, a journey to the heart that you have embarked upon by being upon this school called planet Earth. And my dear friends, with another deep breath, just simply open your eyes now. Take a peek around the room. How have things changed by that simple state of surrender to the love that you are, the love that you are worthy of? To know this in your heart, my dear friends, take a peek around and the world might look a little fresher, a little bit more beautiful, the colors a bit more bright. And you, my dear friends, if you can in this moment here, surrender to your heart and allow for all of these little bits and pieces of your life to fall away that are not serving you anymore so that you can at a long last feel like you are in the world and not separate from the very same. Enjoying the expression of yourself, enjoying with, uh, with uh, if you will, rapture, how the world responds to you. If they walk away, you say, that's wonderful, that's all right. If they come closer, you say, hooray, that's beautiful. And you learn how to dance with life. It is not a dance of judgment or shame or guilt or anything else. It is a dance of love, my dear friends. Go where you are wanted. Be where you are needed. Trust in your own heart and live your life authentically from there. And my dear friends, we love you so very much. Go your way in peace, love and harmony, for life is indeed a joy. And all you have to do is you enjoy the journey to your own hearts and certainly to your own enlightenment. You simply lighten up just a little bit more. And my dear friends, when you're enlightened, what you're gonna do next? God bless you indeed. <gasps> Oh. I'm back.